Hey guys, Rhonda Draculis, RK3 Designs. And have you ever had a beautiful piece ready to go, walk in the next morning, and you have a critter living in your top coat? That is not fun. I'm hoping that when we use the sandpaper that it's gonna be a nice level removal and I'll be able to go straight over the top with my ultimate top coat. So let's get busy and let's get this fly out of here. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come in with my 220 sanding paper and I'm just gonna start sanding it down until we're level with the original finish. So we still have a little bit of that fly. So we're gonna go a little bit deeper. Okay, so the reason I went around the area instead of just concentrating on that one small piece is because when I sanded it, I didn't want there to be a divot here. So as I sanded it, I brought it out so that I'm smoothing it all out and feathering out. And like I said, I don't have one little area that has a sanding divot. So everything looks good. I don't see a little fly. The telltale is if I can rub my hand over this and not feel it be a really big divot. If it's a little bit of a wave, I'm really not worried about that because I know I'm going over the top of this with the ultimate top coat. And that is a fabulous product to be able to hide tiny little imperfections on your surface. So I'm super excited that it came out like this and I don't have to put another flood coat. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna give the whole surface a, a light sanding and then we'll get ready to put the ultimate top coat. And I'll clean my surface with some alcohol and I'll come back with my hand sander and I'll lightly scuff up my edges, being very careful not to burn through For the circle, I'll come in and lightly do the inside. So we're ready to go. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna prepare to pour our ultimate top coat. And this is the first thing I do before I mix up any of my products. I'm gonna prep a wet roller, and for every one wet roller that I prepare, we're gonna prep two dry rollers. And what I mean by prep, we're gonna de-shed them. So the best way to, to shed them is to run them over some kind of tape, and this is the way that we like to do it the best. The unprepped roller, Still looks kind of fuzzy, but a prepped roller looks like a scared cat. So I've sanded and prepped the uh, top to get rid of all the very tiny uh, imperfections. And also the sanding is gonna help the ultimate top coat grab a hold and have good adhesion. Okay, so for every four ounces of mixed up material, you're gonna add one capful <laughs> you're gonna add one capful that comes with the bottle, one capful of water. So if I'm mixing up eight ounces at a time, I'm gonna add two capfuls of water. And to me, that's been the magic number. All right, so we've got our part A and our part B. It's very important also to remember to shake part A or to stir it actually very softly. Don't shake it really hard you'll entrain bubbles, but to really mix part A well in the bottle before you put it in your cup. And you've only got about 15 minutes to work with this product before it starts to thicken up. Now let me show you another little thing that I've noticed. I want you to look at how thick this material is before I put the water in. I want you to see as I lift, see the little mounds that it's creating when it hits the surface? it makes like a little mound. All right, so now I want you to see what it looks like after we add a cap full of water. Make sure you mix it really well, scraping your edges. Now I want you to see when I lift the stick, how the little mounds now flatten out a lot faster. 
That's kind of how I tell if it's the consistency that I need it to be. I try not to mix up more than about 10 or 12 ounces at a time. So if I have a really big project I'm doing, I'll break the pot projects up into separate pieces so that I don't have a lot to do at one time. It's also really a great practice if you can get someone to help you do this because you'll really lay out a much smoother finish if you have two people doing it. When you lay out your material, you wanna make sure that you really saturate your wet roller first. And then when you're laying it out, you wanna start at one end and you wanna be consistent with the amount of product that you lay down. And you also don't wanna go back over one area too many times. Then I'll come back now with my dry roller and now I'm gonna start feathering it out. Now when I feather this out, I'm literally barely holding my roller. So I'm putting zero pressure on that roller. I'm letting the weight of the roller do the work. So now that I've feathered it out, I'm gonna get my edges. I'm paying really close attention at the fact that my roller is not sticking. It's rolling very, very easily and it's not trying to skip. Now that I've got it feathered out, now I'm gonna go in one direction, very, very softly. I'm looking, I don't see any areas that I didn't hit. Now, when you do this, don't expect to get all your lap lines out while it's wet. You're gonna see faint lap lines. Those will disappear when it's dry. Also, the coat's gonna, the top's gonna look a little milky. That too is gonna get very clear once it dries. If I see a place that maybe I think I didn't touch, you cannot go back now at this point and fix it. If you do, you will really mess up the finish. If it's a really bad imperfection, the best thing to do is to wait till it dries, sand it, and reapply. It's very important that you get the right amount of material on your board. If you don't put enough material, you're gonna see areas that are really shiny and you'll be able to see down through the glossed area. If you put too much, it's really gonna be hard for you to feather the material out with your dry roller without leaving any kind of lap lines. Now, if you're short like me, you can get the rollers that have the extension on them and it makes it a lot easier. All right, it looks good. Give me five. Okay, so when you finish, most of the time you guys are gonna have a little bit of material left. Let me give you a little hint. Take a sample board and I'll tape it off and I'll put half of the sample board with the UTC and leave the other half uh, high gloss. That way, when I show a customer, they'll be able to see both of the sheens and decide which one that they like the best. You can check out our website for all of the products that we used here, rk3designs.com. Also check out our online course, onlineepoxypro.com. So guys, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, hit the bell for future notifications and subscribe to our channel. But most of all, remember, don't be scared, move forward and be creative.